my name is Brenda Bates, Medicine Woman. And with me tonight is my Scott husband. Bates. My husband. <laughs> and of course, okay. on Wednesday night, Jen is off to do her thing. Um, so tonight, uh, let's see, October 3rd, is it? Yeah. Yes. It's my October. sister's birthday, so happy birthday to her. I know that from time to time she listens to the show. Which sister? Well, my oldest one. I don't oh. think she wants me to say her name. Okay. But I do appreciate her, and so happy birthday to her. There's a lot of all these wonderful, interesting things going on. Um, the one thing that I found today on the internet, uh, I don't know if you're used to the TED Talks or not, Scott. No. Okay, well, TED Talks are these really cool places where people get up for 10 to 20 minutes and they have, have a voice. And TED, the, you know, the TED Talks is a place where you can actually get a chance to use your voice. And I believe it's uh, TED.com. But in TED, one of the things is today what caught my eye and which allowed me really to think about me was simply the idea of a fighting spirit. A fighting spirit is something that is very much needed in order to be balanced in this world. Um, since this just came to my attention, I, I'm going to be unrolling or unfolding this with you. And the yin side, the feminine side, is to gather and to bring, and it's all expansive to bring it down to detail. And then the male brings it into detail and then brings it out into the world. And that's where the, the fighting comes in. This is where you um, eject and just the forcing of pushing out. Now, I'd like to have a conversation with you, but I don't know if I can because you're well. all over the place. <laughs> so you understand that this world, you can look out there and you can see how everybody is fighting. Yes. And there are gangs in the street there are which are fighting for some type of family, some type of um, territorial issues. And then you have people that are fighting, uh, who's going to be in charge? And we've got our, what is on tonight at 9 o'clock? I think the debates are at 9, is that right? I, I don't remember. I don't know, you're the one that so they, tells Yeah, me. if anybody knows for sure what time they start, let, let, type it in the chat room or something, we're just curious. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is that people are fighting, and that's part of the archetype that's from the old era that's changing out. How do we change that out? Well, that's what part of my job is. Probably other uh, people have come on this planet to do the same thing, but I focus on what I need to do. And when you learn to bring the male and the female together when it comes to the fighting spirit. Now, our wonderful person, Octarine, that has been with us from the very t the first time we had our show, she's all for balance just like I am. And I have done some readings for her and other little things, and she feels compelled that she would like to say thank you and show the balance. And so we got a wonderful package in the mail, and me and Jen, and it was both of us had matching uh, magic bags, as she calls them, and they are pur there are colors, they're purple and white. Maybe that's why she was asking what her favorite color was the other time. Yes. That's what I'm thinking of. So I really love those, and Jen does too, so we appreciate that. And the colors, now I could just totally see me doing my hair, all these different colors. She, she sent us some hair dye, and I tell you, I'm all for being exploratory, um, but I'm a little nervous, and I have no idea why. I know it's not going to be permanently forever. I know that I have chosen... Um, Let's see, I'm 45, and I wanted to wait until I started getting any gray before I really dyed my hair. I had, when I was a little younger, you dye it, you know, black, and you dye it, um, let's see, other colors, and, and, but my hair always seemed to be unhealthy. So, when I had a bad perm, I had it cut off short, my hair finally grew out, and I've kind of been what you call, um... <laughs> I've kind of been reluctant because I've been waiting and my, my hair finally grew. And it had some help growing. <laughs> I had some uh, bronchial issues. And one of the things is, is it got so bad for my lung that they had to give me steroids. And a couple <laughs> steroid shots made my hair grow. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, look how fast it's growing. My, my hair, my bangs always grow, but the rest of it seemed like it never did. <laughs> so... <coughs> Excuse me. So what uh, I ended up 
doing now is being putting in that I don't, I'm scared. And it's like that part needs to go out because I am ready to always have it. And I have designed, I thought about how I want it on my certain tips, the back of my hair, trying to figure out where I want the colors because I think I want all the three colors that she sent. They're really nice. And, you know, as far as doing it now, yeah, I, I, I just do it. It's what Nike says, just do it now. And so one of the things is, is that, I, honey, why don't you go and take care of that phone real okay. quick and then come back. So the phone keeps ringing and just a lot of things bustle around in this house and they forget that on Wednesday night it's a studio. <laughs> it's okay. All's good. So, um... I have two events coming up, and they're only on the radio, so it's not a big deal. I haven't found a good day. I was hoping a nice outside day with the sun shining nice and bright because I need to take some really good headshots. Um, I have to. I have two chances to go on a tele summit. I'd go on the tele summit, and I'm all I'm all excited about the tele summit. Um, an opportunity to pretty much launch yourself. So that's kind of exciting to be able to launch yourself. Yes. And you know, it's it's my you know, one of my good friends that I started out the radio show with, she had called me and asked me to come come on board. So it's going to be really good. Ah, I love how Karen says that uh, although the blue and green last longer on gray hair, <laughs> that's what you get little, I, I little ladies on uh that have blue hair. I, darn I already got mine kinda Restored. <laughs> do you know that Grecian formula for men is, uh, a, do they say it's a natural component? Well, what they're saying is basically as we age, our body loses the ability to produce melanin, not melatonin, but melanin. It's a, a hair coloring thing or something like that. And this Grecian formula, not to advertise for them or anything, but they're the only product out there I could find, basically restores the, supposed to restore that chemical to your body or whatever. You, well, sure you, enough, you comb it in, and yeah, just and, on the hair, and yeah. it's amazing how and whatever it color your color hair, back. Whatever color your hair originally was is what it will turn it back into it. It isn't a, a dye, really, that I no, know. No, it's not. I, I'm curious. And why can't it, we use it? <laughs> it? Yeah, why is it just, why do guys seem to just use it, I guess? Well, but, that's all usually Anyways, uh, but, so my hair isn't so green anymore. I always think, I wouldn't mind the green, but... <laughs> <laughs> I might just surprise him while he's sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I'll wake up with green hair. Yeah, I'm I don't sure know what my, your boss my, would say. <laughs> people I work with would probably raise an eyebrow, but... <laughs> oh, that's all right. But yeah, uh, probably after the weather, gosh, I'm hoping it'll come soon, is that, you know, I want to get out there and take a bunch of shots and with different outfits to see what's the best and so that I can have a clear headshot. I like some of the ones I already have, but those, those are actually quite a few months old and I... Wanted, I wanted because I'm creating a new adventure. I wanted to create the picture for the new adventure. So one of these days I'm gonna get out there, get that headshot, and then once that's uh, out of the way, then I think I'll be venturous and do my hair. And so I've always mm -hmm. wanted. I used to have hair clips in, you know, the, the different little hair clips you put in. And I used to do gallery readings where I just uh, once a month or so people would come to my house and I would do gallery readings. And I always had some color in my hair. And I'll tell you, I would freak some people out. It's not like I had my whole head that color. It'd be like a little strand here and there. And I would have, and then I even had it in a bun where all you saw was my hair, but then in the back was a different color. And it's amazing how people will come up to you and go, oh my God, I thought you were a freak, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, seriously, you're not, you're not the right customer. God, <laughs> just, but anyway. Yeah, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but I, I also know that free spirit wise, I want to do it, and that goes to the fighting of the spirits. Um, the, your spirit needs to be a fighter, and, and all it means is not on an angry one, but one that has the, the will to fight to survive, the will to fight to move. This um, Janae, I think it's Shepard, Janine, Janine Shepard, I believe her name was, and who she is, is that she loved exercising they called her Jean the machine and or what is it Janae I can't remember her name now Janine machine. the machine Janine the machine anyways um, she sense. really was wanting to go ahead for the Olympics she's really thinking about it she loved it she was cycling in her bike she's going up the mountain I can't remember what just, uh, trial runs or whatever they were doing but anyways in, in that cold air you know how it hurts her lungs she loved it and she's that thrill of being that physical being and then all of a sudden everything went black 
And she tells a story very beautifully on Ted, and it's about 19 minutes or so, but it's very, very wonderfully, um, it's her life. She got hit by a vehicle, I can't remember what kind of truck it was, and it broke six spots in, in her spine, and um, her neck broke, um, her ribs, everything was just, she was pretty much in a body cast and all this. Um, they did surgeries on her, she was in a spinal ward for months, and... You know, she's quadriplegic, told she wasn't going to be able to do anything. Then she was in a spinal ward with a bunch of other people. and You're on your back, so you never see any other people. Um, you hear them, you talk to them, but you have to, you know, because your head is not made to move. You're laid in that position. And one day, and I love how she talks about this, it's on my Facebook wall. She, this, this, the doctor comes in, I believe it is, and gives them all straws and says, Here, link them together. And we're like, oh great, we can't do anything else. Sure, why not? So they're linking these straws together, and then all of a sudden the doctor comes in and he links all the straws together. He says, no, hang on to it. And what you're going to notice is that we're all one. We're all connected in some form. <clears throat> and she didn't forget the, that experience. But because she had the fighting spirit, she was able to decide that she can do something else. She fought to do something else. She couldn't walk, she couldn't run, she couldn't do what she loved to do, so she saw an airplane fly by one day as she was in her depressed state. And she says, I'm going to fly. And everybody's like, what? You can't even walk. Doesn't matter. Because of that goal, that determination was there, and her, her fighting spirit was there, and so she ended up taking and not only learning how to fly, she's now an instructor. But then she learned how to fly upside down, and she became a instructor for that. She went and pushed herself to the point where she walks and talks, just like you and I. You would never know that she had been a paraplegic. Before we get back onto the story, as always, we love when our callers call in. So, how about if we take our first call? Area code 210. You're on the air with Brenda and Scott. Good, and how are you? I'm doing fine. I'm excited that y'all took my call. Thank you so very much. Oh, I appreciate you calling in. And how can I help you? Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know, what was y'all's opinion as far as the um, 
Um, it's interesting that you would call, and I, I totally advise you to watch. I, I can't get near the computer right now, but um, I promised to put it on my Facebook wall and stuff. But this TED Talks of that Janine Shepherd, and I'm not my body. I believe it is that she. What the title of it is? <clears throat> but she had been completely crippled. And now she has moved forward, and to, and it's an incredible story, and it helps you um, to up. Uh, what do you want to call it? <laughs> she tells you of how do you pronounce that, Scott? Taoism, uh, Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. Or Tzu. It's T Z U. The <laughs> phrase is is that sometimes you have to be lost in order to be found, and. She literally had to lose herself so that she could become what she was supposed to be. She, because she no longer could have been this athlete. You know, that physical driven uh -huh. person. And that's all she knew all her life. And then when she says, well, if I can't physically do anything, then I'm going to learn how to fly. And she found out that that's what she loves to do. She would have never ever pursued flying if it hadn't been for her body to break down. So sometimes we think we know who we are and sometimes there's that we need to have a variety of things that happen into our life and I really feel that you are supposed to be opening up in a new area and not go with what's familiar and comfortable but go with what you all of a sudden there's that deep desire that fighting spirit to want something more and yeah, I feel you have a fighting spirit that has gotten you to this place where you're not just a victim. You are someone that, okay, I have this that happened to me. I'm ready to move forward. As far as moving into a new career, I feel it's there. I feel that you have just been a little bit here and there uncovering it. But I really feel that you start living in that direction because if, you're on, if your body is saying, I'm sorry, I don't want you to go in this direction, there's another direction waiting for you. Okay, in this case, that's what I see. Um, and the way that uh, the, we pronounce that guy's name is Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu, okay. Yes. Somebody helped us just pronounce it correctly. But it's very, very important to help you understand that it is taking our eyes off it. This is what I call a form of a pass, which you are looking at this direction, you're thinking this is the direction you want. And then all of a sudden, bam, you are now pushed into another direction. So you have several questions here, and one of the things is, is that you're ready to just start protecting your treasures. Um, and that I get. Now, what I want to look at is that the reason for the bladder to have to have that operation is what seems to be what your soul wants me to look at first. And the projection of why you were to need it. Now hold on, I got there's so much energy around you right now. Um, are you using a machine or anything that, that a frequency machine, something that changes your frequencies from time to time, like a, a, ten, a tens um, machine or any of that stuff? Well, I'm using a time machine. Okay, let me see if that was what. Mm, that's not doing it as much. Okay, well what I'm getting is that there's some energies, so electrical shorts that I'm feeling. Um, so, remember this was before, not at this point now, so I'm just going back. It says that um, there's all of these little electrical shorts, so that means that certain areas of your body was not getting the energy that it needed. So, those areas that didn't get the energy started to break down. And so they're saying the direction that I need to go, it goes back to being defensive. Um, you were born to have to fight. So did, okay, so was there a lot of fighting when you were growing up? All right, so let me just find out if that's another reason why your spirit is doing what it's doing. Okay, so the first time, I'm asking your soul, so the first time you ever felt like you were not wanted was inside the womb at birth. Um, the final decision that you felt from your mother was when you actually came out of the womb. At the, you know, at this point, there, you know, you can experience things, but you don't mark it until the actual um, 
the right event comes along and I feel it's like I feel like it's minutes right after you were born that you you were born a girl and I don't know if she wanted a girl and I'm trying to figure out whether or not if wanting a child at all was in play here so a part of me feels in a way she did want a child she wanted a boy um, did she did, did she have any boys did she have any more kids no. Well, that's part of you wanting to love her. Yeah, but that's also part of wanting her to love you. Uh, my mother wanted me, but in my mind, because when we didn't have a lot of food, I know that my mother had a thought about wanting to put me up for adoption. And as a, you got to remember, when you're making these decisions, you're making them as a baby, as a one-year-old, as a few months, you know, a few weeks old, and that. Uh, by all rights, you shouldn't be making a rational adult decision, but you're not supposed to. It's your soul that's supposed to see how you react in those situations. Um, so from that point forward, all I ever did was, okay, if that makes my mother happy, then I'm going to do it. If that makes my mother mad, I won't do it. And that really had cut me up because I didn't, I couldn't become who I wanted to be because I was becoming what she wanted me to be. But then she didn't really want me to be anything either. Uh, except for to behave and do everything right, you know, as far as, um, you know, don't go out and do this, don't go do that, don't, which is, you know, some good moral things there, but it was just, it's, t you know, it's, I understand what your soul's doing, is that it's like, I just want to be loved, and, but uh, as far as the operation goes, there was a part of you that didn't want to do it, and the part that wanted to do it was to please her to some degree, and you were convinced that, hey, it might work. Because it wasn't just her that told you, it was other people that had told you that you could. But deep wow. down, your body was saying it didn't want it. Now the reason for the operation that had to happen, the reason why the operation had to happen was because you had to, you had to face the fact that you suppress that inner voice of the little girl in you that wants to cry. Um, you wanted and needed attention from your um, mother. And... Oops, hold on, I was just reaching across trying to grab a really big, heavy book. Now, you're saying that you have spinal problems now, right? Um, lower spine, my area. All right, so I'm going to look my, for something real quick. All right, they're showing me that in the sacrum area, the energy there says, how should I carry the burdens of life? Now, that question um, that's sitting in the sacrum... That energy that's there, is that yours? No, that is actually your mother. Your mother doesn't know how to do this. So your mother did not know how to be a mother. So you the oldest or the youngest? Oldest. Yeah, so when you came along, she did not know how to do this. And it's not that you want to blame people to be your burden, okay? So I just want you to get this straight. When I had to take care of my mother, I love my mother. But it, after four years, it became a burden on my psychic ability. I mean, I'm like tired. I'm, I'm taking care of her. I'm living her life. And I just lost it sometimes. But, you know, it felt like a burden. I could feel her thinking she thought she was a burden. And, you know, and it's those feelings that we don't want to admit. But sometimes we have to admit and then use a tool to get them out in order to be free from it. So and the reason I tell you this is because we can't deny that sometimes we have thoughts and feelings that can be overwhelming and we don't want to admit to it. And all I can say is at this point, your mother didn't know how to be a mother. So it's not that she saw you as a burden as much as, I don't know how to do this, and that becomes a burden alone. I knew how to help my mother, but I didn't really know how to help her because she had cancer, and I, I'm like, I don't know what else to do. 
and there was just felt like there was no hope. It's just like when I was a young mother, I was doing it, you know, pretty much alone as far as taking care of him while he was at work and then every day trying to entertain them, make sure they get the best education. And it got to the point that when somebody wants my constant, constant attention, it's hard for me because I don't have that ability back then. I have it more now than I did, but when you don't have that particular part or you're not made of that particular part and you're forcing yourself to do it, it becomes a burden. So, for now, I'm looking, and I don't ever feel like you ever felt like you were a burden, except for you felt like you shouldn't have been here, which is almost similar to thinking that you're a burden. But to actually take on the decision. Okay, go ahead, say it. Oh, God. Now, this is, it's still, it's weird because you're not, I, I'm looking and I'm asking your soul, did she make the decision that she feels like she's a burden? No. You feel like you're a punishment. Isn't that interesting? I don't know if you consciously are aware of that. Right, yes. Um, so I'm looking at the bottom of your spine, and again, with all of these things, you know, they make and play a part because when you are thinking and feeling, and because you are that sensitive and you have that ability, um, I know I've had to learn to fine tune, understand it, and then come to terms with it and create a balance because it was starting to eat me alive physically. And because I know this and how it affects the body, like for instance, I have to tell you that when my husband and I, before we really this last year got together and took become a spiritual human together, um, we were just two people that were trying to be human together. And I could tell when he resented me because his resentment would go into my lungs. And then it would just be like, this is what love is, is just to be resented. Now, he's a great man. It's just that he was having stuff that he couldn't resolve. And, and, and when you can't resolve something, it builds up. Now, he doesn't even have to speak, and you probably understand that too. A person doesn't have to speak. All they have to do is be thinking and feeling their stuff, and you literally know what, what they're doing. And so my body was doing the same thing. And I'm like, okay, I know you resent me. He goes, what are you talking about? I don't resent you. And it's like, oh, my God, I totally do, and I'm tired of this. We have to change something in our relationship. And when he finally said yes, and then he started to pour it out, he realized he's not, but he is. But I says, how about if we resolve this so that it doesn't block and interfere with our relationship? You know, and finally he did. And so now I don't even feel those things. And when I do feel something come up in him, I say, okay, let's address this. Because I don't want to feel it. I don't want to take it on. And I don't want his body to break down neither. So <clears throat> you have a lot of things going on in you. And the main thing they're telling you is that there's stuff that you need to resolve. The one thing that you definitely need to resolve, and this sits in the coccyx tailbone, the coccyx area, is the blame of self. I blame myself. And I feel in a way that is what, I can't find the exact words yet, but, and that's where you need to come in and help me. And I know that the things that she said, the things that you felt from her, even if she never spoke, you blame yourself. And you think you're a punishment to her. And that is exactly what's causing the energy not to want to move and not to want to be cleared out. And it's, 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 it needs to be resolved. 
So there's several things that are going on and I have to figure out what's the best one that can help you. Now I'm only going to be able to help you with maybe one or two things um, unless you call and make an appointment. Um, you can always call back on the show later. We also have one on Mondays. Um, we also do two other shows during the week on a different station. Um, you know, I mean, it all depends because if you don't have money and you just don't mind taking this route. Uh, this is all jammed in there. And this is going to, this is a big one. But one of the things we do is we have healing tools and that's at um, MW Re Reveal. M is in medicine, W is in woman, reveal dot com. And you will look under healing tools and the one thing that you're going to do is that you're going to look under hope therapy. You will look under meridian to, to tapping if you want to continue to do healing for yourself. I believe in self-help, but I also believe in being um, instructed. I like when somebody can guide me and help me. Um, but to help you save money, the hope therapy, and because it's of the blame of the self, it is, because I'm looking, and, and I have this particular sheet that I have in front of me that talks about the 12, the 14 meridians, and they all have a conversation together inside your body, and the main thing is, is that it's scattered, and you have different thoughts of outbursts that just happen, and then, that's why I said, are you using machine, and you said, not really, and as I look back, these are these little stuck points, and they're all trying to connect and make energy and to move forward. So, I'm just waiting for, okay, I don't have it up yet. We started to do the, the, the YouTube video, um, but we will get it up. You have scrambled energy, for one. And have, do you know anything about Donna Eden? Donna Eden. That's E D E N. It's D O N N A. Eden is an E D E N. Now, this woman I adore and I love and I'm thankful she's on the planet. She has energy medicine all over the place. She has they they saved her life. They actually have helped me save my life and all of these energies. Now, I believe in using all healing tools you possibly can. Now, why I tell you this is that you have scrambled energy, and I think I just put this on the show last week, and you don't have to look for her, but she's the one I'm remembering at this point. It's called Wayne Cook Posture, and then there's the, the hook, or the Wayne Cook, Cook, Hook, Hook Up, or whatever, but anyways, it's just a Wayne Cook Posture, and what you're doing is simply you're balancing your um, the energy is the left side, the right side coming together. Now I think, I don't remember which video I have up, but I had it and I showed it once. I will do my best to get the video up in the next few days, but I need you to learn to unscramble your energies. Because right now, all the different outbursts that I see, there are all these little tornadoes that are happening all around you. And they're trying so hard to connect. Um, and you have, and, but the reason that they're there, from what I can tell, is so that you can ha handle the pain individually, which is great, but your body is, I feel the separation, I feel, and that's probably where the immune system is, feels like it has to attack itself. Um, the other part of the, the equation that I'm seeing here, because now I'm looking at the immune system, and it's easier to attack yourself uh, because there's denigration process that we do. We talk negatively to ourselves. But we also know what other people think of us, and so that becomes an attack on us. Like if my mother, if you say, my mother don't like me, that's it. that is you knowing and understanding. And you have to understand, for every thought you think, you create chemical peptides. So if you're thinking negative thoughts, you have to create negative chemical peptides, and that creates uh, a depletion, and eventually it is supposed to break down the body. You, being that you're an empath, you just have to sit next to somebody that's negative, and without ha knowing how to put a barrier up, or a, what I call a healthy boundary, you will then be taking on their thoughts, their field, and then your body's still going to make the same chemical peptides. If they're in a negative space, you'll be making them. Which means, again, your body has to break down. So it feels like it's being attacked constantly from every direction. And so therefore, um, 
the biggest thing that why your body wants to attack is based on so far the sensory system of sound now I believe that you without hearing it you hear it everything has a sound wave um, even chemical peptides have sound waves and so I think you are using your ears even if you can't hear, you would still be picking it up because you have an inner sense of hearing. And you're hearing the frequencies. And that causes great disturbances, especially in your immune system. Because the immune system is constantly eavesdropping on your conversation, on what you're thinking, on what other people are doing. And it eavesdrops. So there's a part of you that has learned that you're constantly going to be under fire, even if there's nothing going on physically around you, it's listening for something. Now, as I'm measuring your empath abilities, you can even tell, like for instance, like I did, and I, there's a lot of people that do, has done it, but when 9-11 happened, you didn't have to have a TV set. Your body started to quake inside way before you even found out. So tell me, when 9-11 when happened, so, so does that what happened to you at night around nine eleven? You could feel it before it began. Oh yeah, and it, and it, yeah, and it actually happened. Um, a lot of other events, like they, my sister died. Um, you know, it happened. And then my grandfather passed away. That happened. Um, you know, a yep. lot of stuff. See and see that's. My surgery. Yeah, see, and I'm measuring this, and one of the things that I'm seeing is that when you had your surgery. You weren't the only one there. You were picking up all the frequencies of anybody else that had any aches and pains. And see, and your, your, your immune system don't know it's not you. It's just trying to protect you. Waiting for another shoe to drop, which is something I would definitely say we need to heal. Is that these little beliefs, these little things that you know, the familiarities, the emotional buildup, you need to diffuse them because they're like little time bombs. And you literally need... And it's not about desensitizing yourself. It's about taking um, over the immune system. It's, um, and how you do that is that you notice on a scale from 0 to 10 how something bothers you. And if it's a huge number, or really any number, because your body will start feeling it, you take and you disrupt it. That's where the meridian tapping comes into play. You know, I, I know they don't like me. Even though I know they don't like me, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Tap that down. Remember, test everything. If it's if it's bugging you, test it. If your body feels achy and you're not sure what's going on, but yet you have that strange feeling, test it. Say, on the scale from 0 to 10, that strange feeling is, oh my God, it's like a 20. Okay, even though I have the strange feeling, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. You have to train your body that it doesn't have to think it's under fire every two seconds. Okay, because you literally have to learn how to use your ability instead of your ability becoming the curse. It's very, very important. So now, one of the things, again, I'm asking the soul. Okay, so and if, as far as going in the direction, yes, you've got this opportunity to sculpt right from start. What would you want to do? Just start exploring. Like, like I said with that Janine, what she ended up doing was she seen an airplane go by and she goes, well, if I can't walk, I'm going to fly. Literally, she did do that. And her fighting spirit came back. And you have a fighting spirit, but there's so much war going on around you. I mean, just for like those that are listening, when, when I'm talking about, about war, I'm talking about how calm it is in your space. But because she's the empath that she is, she feels the echoes, and she doesn't realize that there's nothing under fire, but her, her whole body thinks, oh my God, there's too much chaos going in this space. You know, even a little kid's energy of bouncing through the room with great love and joy would knock her off her center because it is a very different frequency. And she, at her, this point, her immune system and her body can only tolerate a very calm, stable, and so far she doesn't even have that when she's in her space. Um, you may want to, and this is going to sound strange, but... You may want to put on a fan every now and then so that the white noise will help counteract and balance a lot of the frequencies, okay? Because usually a white noise will help actually calm down particular vibrations in the body. Another strange thing is there are things called Q-links, um, and 
I think they're fifty dollars now, and that will help you calm your vibration down when everybody's vibration is going on so high. Another strange thing that you can do. It's called a Q. It's a called a Q link. You know, letter Q. Yeah, letter Q, and then dash link. L I N K. Okay. Now. Like I said, the other strange thing is, is that when you, because yours is so dramatic, um, it's like you're such a receiver that you have to, you're going to laugh. Okay, um, there are these uh, aluminum blankets or these, these little tin foil, I can't remember what it's called, but anyways, it's like in camping. What they do is an emergency pack, and it's an, an, in emergency, you unfold this little tiny silver sheet. I think the military used to use yes, they do. these little... They're, they're real small. They can fit in your pocket, but they, a friend of mine had one years ago, and I couldn't believe how warm it would keep you for a little, little like a piece of little plastic. But, but it's because <clears> it's <throat> the silver or the aluminum or whatever. I have thing. one here. but um, and what it, If you could put that over certain parts of your body that are vulnerable, like even if you put it on your, you know, just put it on your body for a little while, the thing is is that you've got to give your body breaks. Your body, it's like when I went into, I had to give a, I had a gallbladder attack, came out of nowhere, knocked me completely out, um, and the pain was so excruciating, I was out of my head. I went to the doctors and, or the hospital, and they gave me, I, by the third or fourth dose, I don't even remember, of really heavy medication, and I said, why is it my body needs so much medication? Well, we have to get ahead of the pain so that your body will stop thinking that it has to be in pain. And I, I was so shocked that she said that. She left. And so that's the only thing I really dramatically remembered from that evening. And when my body got ahead of the pain, it was like, oh, yeah, piece of cake. I can take care of it. And after my body got under control, she said, oh, you'll be fine. She says, you just do this, you know, nothing big. There really wasn't any medication. And she says, no, you know, you're probably going to have to go to the hospital and they have an operation. And um, I was so shocked. What? And then what I found out, not from anybody but my spirit guides, plus some teachers that I know, is that you have to, there are places in your body that are very vulnerable. And if you can kind of counteract that with these things that I was telling you about. And, and stones. Stones are wonderful too. Um, the ammonite stone and the selenite stone, um, the kyanite stone works with intention, but there's, and I, I have stones that I have in my room, I have on my personal body, and the closer I can get it to the area that is needed, the better. And all these things are wonderful because the stones have properties within themselves, so they vibrate out that frequency of, of you know, like if it's there to balance something, then it vibrates that out. So, but they do help. It, ki yeah, kyanite's awesome. So there's a lot of things you can do, but the main thing is, is that we have to tell your body, and, and it, we have to tell your brain, per se, and the only way to talk to tell your brain to stop having that is to tell the subconscious mind because all healing takes place on the subconscious level okay so the subconscious mind needs programmed or deprogrammed so you have to unlearn what you've learned and you by taking that negative that negative emotions and when you are tapping that out or using hope therapy and it gets down to zero and white literally the frontal lobe of your brain stops creating that reality. Your brain then says, oh, I don't have to mark this in the area of my brain, and it doesn't have to send a signal to your body that says it has to go out of whack. Okay? <clears throat> because you can do all the damage you want to your body, but your brain will be the one that marks it. But your subconscious mind tells the brain to mark it. So, so how do I get to that subconscious mind? Easy. We disrupt the signal so that the communication gets disrupted and then when you take the emotions the emotions is what causes the vibration of your body to act a certain way so when you think if you didn't create a chemical peptide you wouldn't have an emotion but because you do think and your brain creates chemical peptides then it's like a key it goes down into the cells where the cells where it needs to like liver will go or anger will go right to liver so anger will go to liver and then plug it in, you know, like a key, turn it on and vibrate at that rate of anger, um, frustration. And literally will start doing damage if it becomes a chronic long-term thing. So, my dear, 
the main thing is, is there's a lot of things we can do. You need to head in the direction that you feel is open. So every day start working with synchronicity about what should I, what is the purpose of my life? What direction should I go in? You can use the golden lasso healing tool on my site and that will help you bring in what you want. There's also the VAX, V-A-K-S, VAX um, healing tool, which actually helps you to sensory, um, to create yourself to be in the state of receiving what it is that you want. Um, because you're that empath, I would say you need to beef up that sensory system to become a happier, healthier state. Secondly, I would tell you to... Besides all the stuff I tell you, the hope therapy that I would tell you to do is to, to it would be R3S. And the hope therapy, you have to watch it because there's different things you have to do. But you need the code. R is, it represents the right wrist, and 3 represents the third position, which is the closest to the elbow. It's on the pulse point. And you're going to hold your thumb on soft. Your pointer finger goes in your palm, and then the, uh, that palm and that hand goes on your forehead and your hairline. The video will show you. What you're going to do is you're going to notice when you feel up and happy and then all of a sudden honey, you feel down. The ups and downs of life is what you're going to focus. When you can't figure out something, you hold that spot. When all of a sudden everything around you seems okay, but you can feel when it starts going chaos. And you're like, oh my God, what the hell is going on? That's literally that triple warmer, that meridian right there is starting to go nuts. And, it's, and the triple warmer represents the army. It's going to attack. And so it, it'll take energy from other places of your body just so that it can attack. And it's a, what's it attacking? The vibrations that you're picking up. It sees it as an enemy because it doesn't know how to protect itself any other way. But we have to help you build that conscious contact within yourself so that you're like, aha, I can do this. So R3S, and you're going to hold it. You're going to, when you feel like you can't figure something else or something muddled happens, like the stability all of a sudden becomes muddled or your thinking or an emotion, you know, just the environment starts to act wacky. When you hold R3S, you put it on the scale from 0 to 10, how you know. And you're going to keep your hand in that position on your forehead as well for as long as you need to. And you focus on it. And you'll, you, because I know you will, you'll be actually be staring at things that you won't even realize you're staring at. And you will almost know the story completely. Just stare at it until all of a sudden you stop knowing it that way. And literally, your body will just change. And so, and you can, and if your body feels like, oh my God, it hurts, breathe it through. Because all you're doing is you're telling your brain and your body that you don't need this anymore and you're going to let it go. Now some things in your body are going to turn on. That's never worked in a long time. And when they turn on, it can be painful. It may not, but breathe it through. Um, <clears throat> when you like when a person's first taking medication, if they're like, oh my God, this is making me sick. After a while, a while their body gets used to it. But when, you're, when you take that medicine out, your body goes, oh my God, I can't live without it. Oh, I feel sick. But give it enough time that all of a sudden the body will all of a sudden be corrected and it doesn't need that anymore. So it's retraining the body and that's part of what you're going to be doing as well with R3S. Is that you are going to learn the boundaries. By, by taking control of uh, dismantling all these negative emotions that are so intense <clears throat> down to zero and you give it a color and that's down to white, what happens is that your energy, your life force energy, starts to come back to you, starts to balance out certain parts of your body, and literally, because <clears throat> you're caught at nucleus, which is the, the part of the brain that governs fear, will actually start to remove the fear and replace it with joy. Okay? You have learned that you physically can conquer things, you mentally can conquer things. Now we need to help you emotionally and spiritually to help you with the rest of yourself. I give you a lot of information, but it, it, believe me, it's not, it's not something you can handle. You know, I know you can handle this, okay? And I will tell you to watch the video, re-listen to the archive, because there's so many gems of what I gave you, and just take the steps. Do the healing tools, look around, find one that grabs you, if you're not sure about it, just wait or call back on the show. Again, if you have the money to spare to be able to do things, then call up 
you know, we're, our, our information's on the website, and make an appointment because we, I know that we would have to do this several times through. Not the same stuff. We would just be knocking them all the ballpark because we have to take and heal this part of your body that has these mm, vibrational, what do you call it, volcanoes or I should say craters because the energy literally feels like it's creating these things in you that you don't need. <clears throat> okay, so they're telling me there's... We could end up talking for another hour. I know we could. But I, this is a radio show and I have to remember where I'm at. And so just take it step by step. Just remember, if you stay connected, you'll see we're on four times a week. That's four chances that you can call in if necessary. Um, right now, you needed information to help calm yourself down. The healing tools, start walking yourself through it, disrupting the signals, and literally you'll start to notice. Anything that throws you out of happiness... Do your best to identify it, give it a name. If you can't, even if it's just a feeling and you recognize it, start tapping. The, and I, like I said, the meridian tapping is what you'd be looking at. But otherwise, go to R3S and just start healing it because your body is in shock. Every time it happens, it's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And, and it needs to get out of that shock stage. It needs to know that you're there to help heal it and take care of it and love it. Okay? All right, so. And. Th Oh, thank you for calling in. Hope to hear from you soon, and hopefully you, with your success, you can do this. Again, if you're not, if you can't, you know where we are, and you can call and make appointments necessary. So thank you, my dear, and have a lovely evening. Thank you.